maybe some of you already know about it which is which is a master equation that uh, which can explain everything so one single master equation which can explain all phenomena physical chemical biological evolutionary cosmological you know creation destruction everything whatever happens in the universe one magic formula so that's the scientists call the grand unified theory or gut in short and uh, almost all the physicists in the world both theist and atheist believe that such a equation exists right and once uh, stephen hawking made a statement uh, he was an atheist but he made this statement that uh, i have no problem in believing in bible or you know going to church and worshiping just the word god in bible has to be replaced by gut grand unified theory so that's what the, that's the statement he made so even if you are an atheist you can uh, you know think about god as the grand unified theory or the master equation or whatever so so and so but yeah. but we rotate but we rotate the picture about 90 degree then science will be on the top it's just a point of view now or no 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 it's the, the top and bottom is not here absolute in this picture uh, i am not referring to top or bottom it's just a connection right you can rotate in any degree uh, as you want fine so okay. uh, i'm coming to that yeah so what i'm trying to say that uh, you know people who project <clears throat> the existence of god or you know the spiritual aspect or the spiritual theory the spiritual philosophy their goal or the motivation is that they <clears throat> want to achieve peace in the world and the same goal is taken by science from a different angle the science tries to make our life easier right it uh, tries to give us comfort i want to make a journey from one place to another place it makes the journey faster right? so buses trains aeroplanes and stuff like that we are uh, we are having heavy summer we are sweating then it brings the air condition so science tries to give us comfort give us uh, you know happiness give us peace in life and so does any spiritual theory about a god whether it's abstract or not independent of that that is the stated aim or stated objective so in that way this triangle is connected now if we look into scientific advancement right so as i mentioned it reduces suffering it increases comfort it gives us knowledge about the universe and it tries to pursue the origin of life so we we'll pick up this one point at a time so the scientific laws are made of cause and effect it's based on some theory and then practical experiment and finally so some determinable outcome so that's how all scientific advancement proceeds and behind this one is item 1 which is called scientific law of cause and effect behind this law there is always some assumption right so i can give some example let's say uh, we talk about uh, the geometry euclidean geometry right so many of you whether you are from science or commerce or arts background you must have studied euclidean geometry in your school and there we all know about the the five axioms right the existence of point the existence of line then uh, this parallel postulate that the parallel to uh, the two parallel lines never meet with each other so we have five euclid's axiom that is the foundation of the subject of geometry right so if you go to let's say the theory of relativity right so there the assumption is that Uh, nothing can travel faster than light the, the speed of the light is maximum so similarly you take any scientific discipline let's say quantum mechanics uh, right? hello hello uh, hello yes yes uh, yes i'm just i'm just in, interrupting a little bit sorry for interrupting sure sure please please i welcome all interruption no no uh, no i'm the i'm uh, you know for the moderators only so actually what is happening you know uh, when somebody is presenting his own screen so the main screen uh, you know the main presentation screen is going in the background so i am requesting all of you who are attending please it is my humble request uh, google meet doesn't have that you know it is quite open anyone can share his screen it is it is up to them but i request 
with my core of my heart in a humble way that please don't share your screen from your mobile or your device that you are using. Please listen attentively and uh, I think Sir can again uh, present his screen, then the screen will come in front. Because the moment anybody is uh, presenting a screen, that screen, the main screen is going in the background. So that's you know, the students who are listening attentively, they are not able to uh, see the main uh, thing. So uh, it's my humble request that please don't uh, present your own screen. So uh, I think uh, 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 Sir can uh, you know, uh, again present his screen because it's going in the background. Mm, right. It is not in the front. Okay, and, and it is not detectable from my end, right? So I am. Oh, watch 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 watch. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I am oh. viewing the screen perfectly. Uh, so I am assuming everyone can see it. However, if you present, then from your side, you know, there may be some problem. It, it was coming proper, but the moment somebody presented his screen, uh, okay. then again it got went to the background. So uh, I think uh, it can be again presented. So now. I request that please don't, uh, uh, anybody please don't present your own screen because again it will go in the background. So it was just proper just a few while ago. So I think, you know, again it can be presented. Then you come if, in the one front. Can, if one can pin this uh, slide, then it will be okay. Achha, pin, pin. Yeah, that's the, yeah, the participants are requested to pin, uh, pin uh, Gautam Paul sir's slide uh, in the device. So oh, that, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. The and best option so that no anybody will share then also uh, screen. Okay, and okay, I, okay. I think I think sharing is not necessary. Why uh, should uh, the audience share the screen? We are not discussing something uh, a distributed document or we are not editing a document in a distributed manner that all of us needs to share our screen. Right. I think uh, better if they stop sharing the screen, <coughs> then it will be viewable. Yes, yes. So yeah. everyone, uh, everyone can pin their uh, the presentation. Everyone can pin, and uh, please don't share your own screen. Okay, these are humble requests from the organizer side. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I did not proceed. So from the last slide, we understood that uh, science proceeds in you know theory, then experiment, and then some observation of outcome and before theory there is a law or equations and that comes from axioms or some assumption and I gave you examples of axioms or assumptions right so and the same is true for any scientific theory whether it is geometry or physics or chemistry or biology now one big question of modern science is the origin of creation or the origin of universe and all of you have know this term Big Bang. So Big Bang is the giant explosion. Scientists assume that at the beginning there was a singularity, there was a single point where all the space and time crumbled together and then suddenly one explosion happened and from that explosion this universe was created and the universe is expanding ever since then. Right. Now this Big Bang theory is accepted in science by most of the physicists, right? The point is, if you look at the theory from a logical point of view, right? from the analytical point of view, then there are a lot of vulnerabilities in the theory. First of all, it is physically unrealizable. There are some simulations in some supercomputers, but those are just, you know, very, very crude approximations. Physically, we cannot simulate, even in small scale, the, the phenomena of Big Bang, like a baby universe or a small universe in some lab. Right? That's one point. Second is, it's astronomically undetectable. Right? So, you know, scientists are having a lot of data. There are a lot of telescopes around the world, and they are collecting microwave background radiation, other kind of thermal radiation and uh, signals from different galaxies and so on. But they indicate expansion of the universe and sometimes the rate of expansion also varies, but there is no concrete evidence that Big Bang really happened. In fact, in 2014, uh, I read a very famous article in Physical Review B 
it actually denied the existence of Big Bang. It said that the universe is oscillating. So there is no singularity. It says that there is expansion and contraction, but while the universe contracts, nothing is annihilated. It's not that everything is destroyed, everything boils down to one point. It's not. It's contracted, but then again it is expanded. So it is called an oscillatory model of the universe. So it was proposed in 2014, so it's like a cyclic in nature, right? And they showed mathematically that whatever the Big Bang theory can predict, this oscillatory theory can also predict. So it is as good as Big Bang and it can replace Big Bang. I mean, there is no phenomena that Big Bang can predict and this oscillatory theory cannot predict. So therefore, it's equally competitive and anyone can freely believe or choose one of the two, right? So again, you see that this topic of faith comes, belief comes, but this faith and belief is based on reason that yes, it is kind of able to predict something. So we cannot unrealize, you know, <clears throat> and, it, and theoretically incompatible, right? So Big Bang, theoretically incompatible means that why the explosion started, it cannot, the theory cannot predict. No physical law can predict. You ask any physicist, any Nobel laureate, they cannot tell you why the Big Bang happened. They will always tell you what happened after Big Bang or first few minutes, first few seconds after the Big Bang, the universe was like this and from then on the universal laws kicked in, the laws of the physics kicked in and the universe started evolving. But why the hell the Big Bang happened from a single point? What initiated the Big Bang? Why that point was unstable? No explanation. It's just an assumption, right? So, you see that <clears throat> the scientific laws that came up in the universe, right? They are quite intelligent laws. I'm coming to that in the next slide. But for that, uh, you know, let, let me first finish this slide. The Big Bang, I mentioned physically unrealizable, astronomically undetectable, theoretically incomplete, mathematically unverifiable, right? Yes, so as I mentioned that why that singularity gave rise to the ex expansion, explosion, nobody knows. Spatially inconceivable, yeah, of course, singularity we cannot uh, conceive. Right? Now, <clears throat> at this point, <clears throat> let's look at this, uh, this, the, this topic of faith, right? So, you see that Big Bang is a matter of faith. This oscillatory theory is a matter of faith. Now, what if there is a third theory, which is also reasonable? That can also be a matter of faith, and either they are equally acceptable or equally rejectable. You cannot say this is better faith than the other, if they are all based on equal amount of reason. So, let's look at the physical laws, right? So, if you see the, the traffic signal, right? The traffic signal, if you look at, it controls the cars, right? The cars moving uh, on the street, it's stopping at a junction, taking turns, no car is colliding, colliding with each other. That's because the traffic law is there. Now, if you look at the, the cosmos, these this astronomical objects, the, the planets, you know, the, the solar system, and similarly other planetary systems that are there beyond these solar systems. Everywhere there is this Kep Kepler's law and Newton's law. All Everything is set in motion and there are the seasons are coming and going. Sir, right? so, so, sorry sir, the slide is not visible in my screen. I think then uh, you, you check your system because uh, from my side everything is okay. Please see in the slide. So, others? Can others comment if they can see the slide? Yes, sir, I can so, see. Yes, sir, it's visible. So, yes, yes, sir, it's visible. So basically, so basically, like, with this five. Let, let, me, let me try sharing again, okay? Yes, sir. I think uh, it's a um, network issue because some of you can see the slide and some of you can.
ียงเห็นกันฟังมีผู้แทนสิเฮ้ยเซอร์ไอคันสิโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเค Whether it is the traffic law <coughs> or it is the planetary system, both require lawmaker. So there is a story that uh, once uh, Isaac Newton invented one thing, and uh, Newton builds a model of a solar system and by using ping pong balls of different sizes. He created a tabletop <coughs> model of the planetary system, and one of his atheist friend was visiting him. Then when the friend came. And saw this uh, model on the table. The friend asked that uh, you know, oh, it's a beautiful model. Who created it? Then uh, Newton mentioned, no, oh, it just fell from the sky. <coughs> I just one sudden morning I found that it is on my table. So then the friend said, how how this could happen? So then <coughs> Isaac Newton commented, well, you cannot believe that uh, this small model, that this tiny model, came out of nowhere. You believe that someone must have created it. Then, how can you believe that there is no creator of this actual cosmological system that is out there, which is much bigger, much complex, much you know control, and which has much laws behind it that's governing it, running it? So you believe this tiny object cannot come out of blue, out of anywhere. Someone has to create it. Some intelligence must go into creating it. But you don't believe that there is no intelligence behind this entire uh, universe, entire cosmos. How is it possible? So that was Isaac Newton's argument of existence of a creator. So uh, we can see that his argument was also based on some reason, right? So the existence of creator or existence of God is also an assumption. I'm not saying that nobody, someone can prove it. It's not a matter of proof. It's a matter of faith or assumption. But the point that I'm trying to make is that it's a reasonable assumption. If Big Bang is a reasonable assumption, if oscillatory model is a reasonable assumption, then the same is the existence of God. So I talked about laws, right? The traffic laws or the laws of the universe. The same thing can be argued from the, the patterns or the structures in the universe, right? If you look at the seed of a tree. How much design is embedded in the small seed? A giant banyan tree with all its, you know, stems, its branches, its leaves. This huge banyan tree, the design of it is embedded in a single seed. The design of the human brain, the human organs, the human tissues and cells and cellular phenomena, they are all encoded into a single you know, sperm cell. So how is it possible? There, a reasonable assumption is some intelligent creature must have designed it, and we call that intelligent uh, creator, uh, creator God. Actually, in scientific community, there is a division. They call it intelligent design, intelligent designer point of view, because they feel that the word God, you know, might be. You know, too, <laughs> might be too much restricting them, or they feel ashamed that they are being a scientist. We should not talk about God. So that kind of taboo, uh, taboo is there among the scientists. So they have, you know, very cunningly coined this terminology. They call it intelligent design. Okay, and you will see the big, big conferences happening on intelligent design. They will not talk about God directly. But they will talk about yes, there is some intelligent designer of this entire universe. Of our DNAs, the information inside the DNA, the RNA, these biological functions, and how this world is happening, the tree, the cycle of cycle of you know birth and death, whatever is happening, it's this pattern. They are all intelligent design embedded into it. In fact, I was uh, reading an article. It was telling that the amount of 
information that is embedded in the human genome, in the DNA, if you want to store that information in computer, you need to build a giant computer which is much larger than the size of our galaxy. It will require so many bits of information and such an amount of, you know, petabyte of petabyte of petabyte of storage that it's not possible to store in an ordinary computer. And such huge amount of bits of information is embedded in a simple genome, right, for which you need a microscope to see. It's really unfathomable. And that information is passed on from one generation to another generation. Such a huge, beautiful structure. Without any designer, without any thinker, it is not possible to create such a system. Right? So, even in modern day, many scientists who do not uh, believe in God, they also agree, yes, some sort of intelligent design is there. Have any, have any of you read uh, this Darwin's book, Origin of Species? Okay, I assume no. So I have a copy of it. So in the Origin of Species, maybe you know the story that when Darwin uh, traveled and collected information about, collected evidence about uh, evolution and published his book, the origin of species, then there was a lot of opposition from the church because Darwin mentioned that there is no God, everything came from evolution, from matter, this amoeba was created, you know, this, this first cellular organism was created from matter and then from unicellular organism, multicellular organism was created and then through evolution, water life was created, <clears throat> then the life expanded from small objects to large, from small life to large life, from reptiles to birds and then mammals and so on. And that's how evolution happened. Different life forms evolved, starting from unicellular organism and starting from hydrocarbon chain. That was Darwin's theory of evolution in short. And there was a fight, there was, uh, you know, always this debate and argument between the church and Darwin, because Darwin did not believe in God initially. But interestingly, if you uh, read the origin of species carefully, right, there is one paragraph where Darwin mentions the complexity of human eye. And in fact, if you talk to any eye surgeon or any medical professional who has knowledge about the, the circuits, the, the structures, the machinery inside the human eye, it's too complicated. In fact, from medical point of view, the eye is the most complicated organ in the human body, even, you know, more complicated than the brain. The brain, the problem is you do not have any information. The knowledge is limited because you cannot, you know, go into the brain alive. You can dissect a dead person's brain, but when the brain is alive, you cannot go into the every cell of it uh, or every part of it. So you cannot collect information because it will affect the lives. The person may go into coma. So that is the problem with the brain. But if we talk about the complexity, then the eye is in fact more complex than the brain. But we have knowledge about the eye, more knowledge about the eye than the brain, because even in a healthy person, you know, one eye is fine. In another eye, you can perform live operation. You can take the local anesthesia and stuff like that. And you can go into it by, you know, electron microscope and stuff like that. But Darwin's point was, and even the ophthalmologists will also agree, that this complexity of eye, the inner structure is so huge. Darwin himself ended his paragraph that such a complex organ cannot evolve from evolution. Evolution cannot, the theory of evolution cannot explain how this complex organ was, you know, uh, evolved out of nothing. So even Darwin admitted it. And later on, from Darwin's time till today, there are a lot of evidences in the biology community against evolution, right? So there is, for example, the missing link. So the missing links are again an assumption, and an unreasonable assumption, I would say, created by the evolutionist, the, the people who believe in evolution, uh, to <coughs> explain how 
from apes human came or how from reptiles the birds came but the point is uh, the argument against it is if evolution is a continuous process then evolution must be happening all the time so we must be able to see at least some reptiles being converted to birds right some apes being converted to human beings it's a slow process but there must be some evidence some entities or some persons who are in between right all the stages must have some samples statistically speaking there must be some samples at every stage because it's a continuous process it's not that there is a jump from the monkey to human being according to um, theory of evolution but we do not see that we call that oh those are missing link that happened in the past if it happened in the past so does it mean evolution has stopped so uh, you know some apes got converted to human beings and then suddenly it stopped from that point no apes are being converted to human beings anymore then the theory of evolution is incomplete it's unreasonable so that way theory of evolution has a lot of problems and these are coming up in modern 21st century people are uh, saying that probably theory of evolution as we understand is wrong so the species may not have evolved one from the other within the species we can explain the mutation of the gene or you know the adaptability in the environment or how the environment and the genes affect the growth of an individual the thought process of an individual that can be explained from uh, explain to some ex uh, to some extent from evolution point of view but creation of life from matter and creation of one life from another life one species from another species that perhaps cannot be explained from the theory of evolution that is almost you know universally accepted and uh, so till today science not even evolution cannot explain how from matter this life was created how suddenly matter becomes conscious it's all hydrogen atoms and so sorry, sorry but something which is not explained properly does it mean uh, does it mean it's wrong it may also be possible that it uh, it is right no it's not about explanation see you can argue about theoretical subject but what i'm saying evolution is an empirical subject like it is about the world out there it is not some fancy mathematics like big bang no one watched uh, the big bang so there you can talk about yes big bang can also be correct so basically god, god's creation can also be correct let me finish god's creation can be correct or auxiliary model can be correct but so here, it may also possible that till till now we don't have the evidence of big bang or black hole so that's why we are uh, saying that uh, both of them are wrong or uh, uh, i am not talking about wrong it's not about wrong or right what i'm trying to say is that uh, let's say for the big bang so there are some problems in the theory of big bang right the same problems are there in the theory of god we have not seen big bang we have not seen god there are some argument for big bang there are some argument for god there are some argument against big bang and there are some argument against god so my point is both are equally valid or both are equally invalid so you have to put faith on one or the other you cannot say my faith on big bang is more reasonable than someone else's faith on god and vice versa also someone cannot say my faith on god is more reasonable than your faith on big bang they should be equally respected that's all i'm saying so both are equally reasonable the scientists make the mistake that they try to justify their faith as supreme as better than the reasonable faith of a spiritualist in science also there is blind faith and reasonable faith in spirituality also there is blind faith and reasonable faith i started my class with this right in spirituality if the faith becomes unreasonable then it becomes fanaticism then you are brainwashed someone tells you something you go and bomb some people kill some people that is called fanaticism because that is not based on reasonable faith that's based on fantasy similarly as frankenstein or some scientists also can live in the world of fantasy and create damage in the world that's what is happening right uh, this atomic explosion or even the biological warfare these are uh, coming from science so both can be you know 
mistreated. So that is not the point. I'm trying to point that if you talk about reasonable faith, right? If you talk about reasonable belief, then both has its side of argument. Both has its side of evidence. That's what we are going to discuss here. We discussed some evidences of science. Now we are discussing evidences of spirituality or evidences of God. Right. Am I clear? So, so it's not about anything wrong or anything. I'm saying that nothing is absolute. And in fact, the theory of spirituality can explain certain things which the science cannot explain. So that way, it has actually more weightage. But of course, we have the free will. We have each individual has the free will and freedom to choose our belief. That nobody is hampering. Even I am not telling you to believe into something. That's you will make your decision to believe in what? Based on your experience, based on your understanding, based on your conviction. But what I'm saying is that just throwing away the matter of God and spirituality as mere bullshit, as some blind faith is absolutely wrong. So that's the point I'm trying to make. So anyway, so coming back to evolution. So <clears throat> you mentioned that the theory of evolution may be correct, but we are not having evidence. So that's what I'm arguing, that if it is correct, there must be some evolution happening and there must be some reptiles being converted to bird and some apes being converted to human. We must be able to see them. At least some samples must be there, from at least from one species to another species. There are so many species and evolution must be happening at all level, between all species, from, you know, amoeba to human being. At all the intermediate levels, it's a continuous process. But it is so surprising that out of so many intermediate species, we do not have a single sample under our observation. When we have, uh, you know, time to find it after so many years. So that's really unreasonable, one thing. Even the evolutionist also cannot explain. And if you say that it happened in the past, there are some fossil records and it's not happening, then that means evolution has stopped. Right? So it cannot be like that. So that is one problem. <coughs> so, <coughs> so we are trying to say is that uh, this spiritual theory can reasonably explain the phenomena that is happening in the world. So the creation theory it's based on the, the, or the theory of God, theory of creation is based on the reasonable assumption that yes, there is some design. So design implies designer. Design cannot come from random event. Right? That's the theory of probability and the theory of information. Theory of entropy will prevent it. So design implies a designer. The existence of physical law implies a lawmaker. Control implies a controller. So that points to some intelligent designer, some intelligent controller, an intelligent creator, whom we call God. So that is one point of view, one reasonable point of view. Okay. Another aspect <coughs> that points to this, uh, this spiritual theory or that gives more weightage to spiritual theory is the life itself. How life came out of matter. One famous Nobel laureate, uh, who I think Zairobi, who's who did research on his entire life, you know, trying to explain how from electron, proton, and neutron life was created, consciousness was created, and then at the end of his life, he made the statement. I tried to find in between electron, proton, and neutron. I found the particles, but in between, life has, you know, <clears throat> slipped away. Life has slipped away, and I could not catch it. And actually, that's the big mystery: how this consciousness comes. Even if you talk about this you know, human experience, right? <clears throat> there was a famous experiment that. You know about motor neurons. So the motor neurons help our uh, peripheral muscular systems to operate. 
they sent signal to hands and legs. So there was an experiment carried out that you take two individuals, similar condition, and then on one individual, you send the brain a signal. So scientists have discovered that which part of the brain is responsible to send message to your arm when you raise an arm. Like when you lift your hand, when you lift your arm, then some parts of the brain gets activated. <clears throat> and so whether you do it consciously or unconsciously. So scientist has recorded that what signals are generated in which parts of the brain, which is eventually instructing the muscular system, the mechanical system, and the hand is being lifted. So they did an experiment. One individual, they asked that you raise your arm. And the second individual, artificially they entered probes into the brain, electrodes into the brain, and they created artificially the signals at the particular center, which dictates the arm to be raised. Externally, from outside observation, both the experiments, the result was exactly identical. The persons, both the persons lifted their arm from the same position to the same position in the same angle. Because the signals generated in the brain for both the persons was actually exactly identical. However, when they were asked that in your experience, what happened? In your experience, what happened? Then they say, one person said, on whom this external electrodes created the signal, he mentioned, I don't know what happened. You know, my, my arm got pulled up or my hand was lifted by somehow. And the second person who was asked to consciously raise his arm, he said, I lifted my arm. So the first person said, my arm was raised. Second person said, I lifted my arm. So you see this, this consciousness is different. This I and this me is now taking it. So that means <clears throat> me and my hand is different. Someone is saying, see, my hand was lifted, and this person is saying, I lifted my hand. So that means my hand and I is a separate entity. So that's the big mystery. This I, this identity, this consciousness, where from this come? So this experiment actually says that our identity, who is me, who am I, that sense, that thought, that feeling, that origin, must be different from the brain. Because externally, exactly identical signals were generated in the brain, the structure of the brain, the function of the brain, the EEG graph, the EMG graph, everything was identical. The chemical, the neurotransmitter, whatever was happening, everything was exactly identical. But the feeling was different. So, <clears throat> we see that uh, this mystery of life, this mystery of consciousness is all pervading and, and we all can relate to it. So how matter can give rise to consciousness, there is no scientific explanation. In fact, all scientific explanation has failed. You know the supervisor uh, of uh, Stephen Hawking, Roger Penrose, he's a famous mathematician. So Roger Penrose, uh, has done some work in human biology also. He has tried to explain how quantum mechanics can uh, give rise to consciousness or the feeling of identity in the human brain. Uh, his famous model called Penrose Echelis model uh, by collaborating with the biologist Echelis. They have tried to explain it. Right? Uh, they say that there are some microtubule structure, which is some protein structure inside the brain, and there are micro-consciousness that are happening there. Now, there is a big problem in that theory also, which actually kills all argument against life comes from matter, or consciousness comes from matter. So the argument is that, well, microtubules or whatever wave function or 
quantum phenomena that might be happening in the brain that's creating mini consciousness, all that is fine. But how the integration happened? That's a big trouble because in the brain there is no integration center. There's no integration center. The stat law of statistics says that if there are a lot of quantum wave functions that are, you know, randomly happening in the brain, then the net effect is that they must cancel out each other. There should be, the result should be a noise or a chaos. In the brain, if there are so many micro-consciousness that are there, because every cell is conscious, you know, every protein molecule is conscious, so there are this micro-consciousness, they are interacting with each other, quantum mechanically, fine. But then the net effect from that cannot come a single experience of consciousness, because these will conflict with each other and cancel, it's a statistical phenomenon. So how one single identity, single me, comes out of so many tiny consciousness, that's completely unanswerable. And that actually kills all the theory. The scientists become silent. It cannot be explained. More macroscopically, this is something I explained you microscopically, going into you know, the, the protein structure inside the brain. But even more macroscopically, you know, when the brain does parallel processing, let's say, let me give an example. Suppose you are looking at a, a round object which is colored green, right? Now in the brain, there is a center which processes color. So that center is telling you, okay, this is red, this is green, this is blue. So that's color identification center, fine. Now there is another center in the brain which identifies shape. So your that part is guiding, oh, this is triangle, this is circle, this is rectangle, fine. But when you are processing these two information together, a red triangle or a green square or a blue sphere, right? When you are identifying the shape and the color together, that's your simultaneous experience that's happening consciously. And the consciousness that is experiencing, the, the identity, that is experiencing is unique. It's not that within you there are two human beings, right? And they do not talk to each other. It's not like that. It's one integrated experience. Now, how that integrate? So I just gave you two examples. Actually, brain processes many such, you know, dimensions parallelly. So, at one point of time, there may be thousand such dimensions, thousand such experiences they are happening at different parts of the brain, right? But inside the brain, scientists have not been able to find a single integration center that will integrate all these feelings and will give you a single experience, right? an integrated experience. That center is absent. So when it comes to this point, then even you know science stops even you know all matter theorist that okay this consciousness comes from matter that stops and then if we talk about the spiritual theory that the self identity is consciousness comes from the existence of soul then that becomes more evident right so again these two are model you have to think in terms of it there is no proof i'm not talking about proof but I am talking about models, right? Models are our experience, our observation. When we see something in the nature, we try to hypothesize what must be the cause. So we try to build models of the cause that, okay, this may be governing this, or this is the explanation behind this, right? So matter gives rise to consciousness. That is one explanation. Soul gives rise to consciousness, that is one explanation. And I am giving you some experiments, some data, some arguments, where this matter gives rise to consciousness theory completely fails, completely shattered. But soul gives rise to consciousness, that theory is sustained. That theory is sustained. And that is more reasonable. Right? Now, 
this is just one evidence and one argument against the existence of soul but there are many more so some of you um, may be aware of this uh, past life memory or the reincarnation memory right now uh, some people believe in it and some people don't right now there is uh, in university of virginia united states of america there was a doctor called Ian Stevens and you can do all Google search right later on after my talk is finished. So Dr. Ian Stevens uh, from the University of Virginia, he was a psychiatrist and doctor. He did not believe in reincarnation and he started his research to prove reincarnation wrong. His hypothesis or his belief was it's all bullshit. People claim to become famous. It's just stories and superstitions and beliefs and I will prove it. So he did 30 years of research, 30 years of research, collecting evidence, traveling all over the world. And he wrote a book, which is called 20 Suggestive Cases of Reincarnation. Right? And it was published by University of Virginia Press, official publication of an American uh, university, doctor university. So University Press Virginia published the 20 Suggestive Cases of Reincarnation. The question is why 20? According to Dr. Ian Stevenson, <coughs> he found thousands and thousands of cases. But of course, some of them were really fake, so he rejected them. Some of them initially he trusted, but later on he found that okay, some people had trained some individual and uh, they collected information of something that happened in the past and they all marked those stories and then mimic those stories, right, to gain, to come into the news. So he rejected all of that. But after a lot of thorough investigation and research, 20 cases he found he could not throw away at all. He could not throw away. So all the negative tests failed. And he was bound to believe these 20 cases were, were really proof of reincarnation. And some of the cases were, like one of his, one of his, belief or assumption was that this uh, this claim of reincarnation or the news reports of reincarnation that happens only in those parts of the world where because of religion and because of culture people believe that uh, the soul is there the soul theory is there and he conjectured that in those parts of the world where there is uh, no belief in soul, where people do not believe in the afterlife, there this reincarnation claim, this news will not happen. That was his understanding. Because people do not have uh, knowledge of this fact that this can happen. There are some tribes, for example, in you know, Africa, in the deep jungles inside Amazon, there are some tribes who do not have any uh, you know, knowledge, who have not studied any books, who are not exposed to the external world, news or internet, who do not know this concept of afterlife or soul. They think that there is only one life from their culture, from generation to generation. Even in those tribes, <coughs> he found this, uh, you know, recalling past life. And then when he investigated, he interacted, and then he found, yes, really, these things happened 100 years to 100 years back, and this person can be caught. <coughs> so this theory of reincarnation points <coughs> to the existence of soul. Now, because he was a scientist, that is uh, Ian Stevenson, the question that is coming to your mind right now came to his mind also. That why not everybody remembers? Why only very few? Why out of thousand cases he only wrote 20 to be you know, believable? So Ian Stevenson did some research on that too. And he wrote a book called where reincarnation and biology intersect. So he found that when the baby is in the womb of the mother, then certain hormones are secreted and one of the hormones is oxytocin. And this oxytocin hormone has the property that it can erase memory. So if a grown-up adult is fed the doses of oxytocin in higher amount, even an adult will lose memory. Depending on the dose, the amount of memory lost will depend. 
So when a child is in the womb, because the biological process, this oxytocin hormone is created and perhaps that erases the memory of the past life. That is one of the conjecture of Ian Stevenson, a reasonable. So again, it comes to reasonable conjecture. And those people who happen to remember their past life, you know, they, for them, maybe the amount of oxytocin that was secreted was much less in the womb. So the eraser does not, did not happen. So it was an accident. So accidentally, they retained their past life. Right? So in fact, when uh, Dr. Ian Stevenson uh, has left his body a few years back, he passed away, but his research team is still there. There are some other professors that he trained and his research scholars, PhD students who have become postdocs now. So there is a big team in University of Virginia that are performing continuing research in this domain. But interestingly, when uh, Jan Stevenson uh, left his body, passed away, then in in an American uh, journal, uh, an obituary was published in memory of his death. So in that obituary, the editor of the journal wrote that the amount of evidence, the amount of scientific evidence that Dr. Ian Stevenson has collected in support of reincarnation is so huge that to deny, to deny those evidences would be like standing in front of Mount Everest, standing in front of Himalaya and denying it. So that was the official obituary written by a mainstream journal editor after Dr. Stevenson had passed. So his evidence is such a huge impact. So, <clears throat> and uh, <coughs> in future we can discuss even more evidence of soul, but for the time being we see that this existence of soul is also based on reasonable faith, reasonable belief. We have so many evidence. So if we believe that, then this whole mystery of consciousness actually can be explained much more scientifically. So that it is the existence of the soul that gives rise to consciousness and identity within the human body or within any life form as such. It's because of the consciousness, the brain can actually integrate. It is the consciousness of the soul that is integrating all the feelings in the brain. Right? So all these problems go away. And if we have all micro-consciousness or micro-soul, the creator, the designer, the God has macro-consciousness or macro-intelligence. So that God, that macro-consciousness, macro-intelligence can create this universe, can create the laws of the universe that govern it, they can create Big Bang, can create Black Hole. So the intelligent design problem is also solved by this super soul, the existence of God. So <laughs> all I'm trying to say is that the soul, the existence of soul and existence of God is not a religious blind faith, but it is also a potentially scientific theory. That's all I'm saying. In science, sometimes there are competing theories, right? You, you know that, okay, this model versus that model, right? This law versus that law. So I would say theory of soul and theory of God, <laughs> because there are so much scientific evidence and scientific reasons to believe them. So they can be treated as scientific axiom or scientific hypothesis <coughs> equally, and the subject can be developed from that. Now, historically, it so happened that our university curriculums are designed in such a way because of political reasons, you know, social reasons. Our curriculums and our mainstream science is designed such a way that it teaches us to reject theory of soul, reject the theory of God from the very beginning, tries to label them as blind faith. So that is the main problem. So why we cannot find more experiments on soul? Because there are no more experiments happening. More experiments are happening on DNA. 
University of Virginia, one example. Similarly, in Canada, there is one university. Anyway, they are like hand-picked, hand-countable. Because the amount of research is less, amount of fund is less, amount of grant is less, amount of people working on them is less. So the amount of research result will obviously be less. <coughs> Other subjects are getting more publications, more things. But if you have an open mind, if you have an open scientific mind, if you do not assume anything for granted, and if you do not reject anything for granted, then you have to accept the theory of soul and accept the theory of God as a potential, viable, possible, scientific <coughs> hypothesis. Okay. I am not talking about proof. In science, actually, you cannot prove anything. <coughs> Whatever you prove in mathematics, that is also based on certain assumptions. If you start with a different assumption, you will be able to prove something else. In mathematical logic, a proof is nothing but a consequence of the assumptions. Right? So, so proof is also based on belief. So there is... Uh, <coughs> okay, so in this uh, slide you see that past life memory I had mentioned, then out of body experience. That's a very interesting thing about the existence of soul. Uh, in UK, in fact, in five hospitals, there were around uh, <clears throat> more than 15,000 patients. A study was done for the last three, four years. <clears throat> five or six top UK universities were present, uh, including University of Cambridge, the Medical School of University of Cambridge. That was uh, one of the five. And they did research on this out-of-body experience. So in the hospital, you know, so there are many terminally ill patients, right? They are about to die. <clears throat> and sometimes they are operated, you know, or they are under coma. And many times it has been reported that when they are under anesthesia, let's say they are being operated, then they came out of their body. The soul came out of their body and it observed the doctors and the nurses. And when the consciousness was regained, that person can could explain in detail what the doctor was wearing, how many nurses were there, how many doctors were there, and how they were dressed, what instruments was used to operate on him, what was the time on the clock when this particular phenomenon happened. All these they can they could explain, and there are many such uh, reports out of that experiment. And it came into the BBC News and other news reports also. It's really surprising. So that can only be explained by soul. No, even no matter theory. Even if you build a fancy matter theory that okay, such a combination of hydrocarbon atoms in such an environment gives rise to consciousness or, you know, the feeling of life, that cannot explain this out-of-body experience. And the patient is observing himself or herself being outside one's own body and observing the environment. Right? This is really weird. Only the theory of soul can explain that the soul came out of the body temporarily and before the brain death happened in the body, the soul could enter. <clears throat> so the body came back to life right? and we can understand that why <clears throat> after a certain stage a dead person cannot be brought to life even a soul is entered you know after all you know a broken car <clears throat> even if you put a efficient driver inside a broken car the driver cannot drive the car our body or in fact the body of any animal is like a vehicle like a car it's a mechanical system <clears throat> however the system must be proper, functional, right? If the system is good, then our driver can drive it. If the car engine is okay, if the hydraulics are working fine, if the steering or the connection, the circuit is fine, then uh, the driver can drive the car. But if the car is broken, the driver cannot. So if the body is broken, if the brain cells are, you know, uh, <coughs> broken, if, uh, you know, the heart has stopped, you know, then even if the soul enters the body, uh, you know, the body cannot be revived because it's a broken car. So that's part of God's design. The death, death is natural and death, rebirth, cycle of birth, 
you know, that can very well be explained by taking into this soul theory into the picture as a scientific theory. So out of body experience is another, you know, uh, prime evidence, undeniable evidence that points to the existence of soul and no other <laughs> material theory can explain it, right? So, uh, I think uh, I will stop after five minutes and then uh, <clears throat> it, will, uh, it will continue. So this is the last slide. So I request the moderator to arrange for the session to continue because I have to leave at 12. So let's <clears throat> let me finish this slide in the next five minutes. So we talked about the theory of soul and the theory of God as a creator, as an intelligent design, right? Now, where from do we get the knowledge of the soul and the knowledge of God, right? We get, we have a physics textbook that gives us knowledge of matter, knowledge of electron, proton, neutron, electron wave, quantum mechanical interaction, electrodynamics. We have knowledge of biology from the books or the experiments. These books, these journals were written by scientists who studied themselves years after years and experimented. And we are putting our faith on them, right? We never went to the lab and saw an electron in our own eye. We did not go to the cyclotron center, right? The Geneva, and then we saw a particle, a neutrino coming up, right? <coughs> We did not put our eye inside the telescope. <clears throat> we are putting our faith, our reasonable faith on the scientists who did it. Because their work has been verified by other scientists. So similarly, <clears throat> we can <clears throat> think of the yogis, the yogis and the rishis of the past who wrote scriptures containing information about soul and information about God to be the scientists who did experiment it themselves, the yogis who could <clears throat> make their soul come out of their own body and wrote these experiences in the yoga sastras, right? And they also wrote about Vastu Shastra, about Ayurveda, about Vedic mathematics, about Sanskrit language, and <clears throat> also about soul and God. And sitting today, when we look back the amount of research that they have done, and when we investigate the, the results that they have obtained, then we can verify a lot of their claims to be scientifically true, right? In many facts about the Vedic mathematics, many facts about the Sanskrit grammar, the universality of it, the many facts about Vastu Sastra, many facts about Ayurveda, <coughs> many facts about meditation and yoga, how it affects the brain, how, you know, the, I was reading an article, you can search in Google, in Harvard Medical School, there was an article that meditation for two hours every day uh, <clears throat> for two months can actually create uh, a different structure, can actually alter the structure in your brain, can change the amount of gray matter in your brain. So meditation has also benefit and it was listed down by our Munish and Rishis. So my point is that we are putting our faith on scientists, right, whose work we ourselves have not verified. We are putting our reasonable faith on that. So why can't we put our faith on our Munis and Rishis who did a lot of material scientific experiments also, which we can verify, like the efficacy of Ayurveda, the efficiency of yoga, the efficiency of meditation, uh, the efficiency of uh, Ayurvedic medicine and stuff like that, which we can verify. So along with that, they did some other experiment also and they claimed and they wrote it down, which right now we are not able to verify. Then we should put reasonable faith on that aspect too. And putting that reasonable faith, putting that reasonable faith, we can start experimenting ourselves. Because like, like mainstream scientific experiments, the Munis and Rishis have listed down recipes, algorithms, steps, of scientific experiments of how to perceive the soul, 
how to experience the soul, how to experience God, they have specified, they have written specs of those experiments. So putting reasonable faith on them based on their scientifically easily verifiable research, we can at least start practicing based on those specs to understand experience soul and God. And then after we do this experiment, we have the right to reject, oh, this is bullshit, nothing happened to me, I did not experience anything, or we can ac accept. So that's my point. So, so this theory of soul and theory of God is also equally scientifically reasonable faith and scientific belief. Okay. So I think this is a, a good place to stop. And I hand over uh, the session to the moderator at this point to continue further. Yeah, so uh, we thank uh, Professor Gautam Paul for uh, giving his valuable time. Yeah, I need to uh, go for another having meeting. such a busy schedule. He has time for us. Yeah, so he has I wish, I wish, I, 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 wish I could time. continue, but today I have another emergency meeting. Uh, so a group meeting, a conference. I have to go, sorry. But you continue. Good luck. And thank you all for being patiently listening. And at the end of the session, there will be question and answer. You can ask questions as much as you want. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, now, uh, the concluding uh, part of the session will be mm -hmm. taken by uh, Professor uh, Shubhak. Thank you, sir. So I request Mr. Shubhak to take the concluding part of this session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Welcome. So, all of you have been uh, very attentively hearing from uh, Professor Gautam Pal. So I'll share my screen uh, for the remaining part. So we'll end at around 12.30. Uh, uh, we'll try to end it. So please be a little more patient. And we have uh, a very special thing coming up. So I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, there is uh, one more small announcement. Uh, okay. uh, one small announcement that uh, all the all the participants uh, are requested to uh, write their name college name and their year or if they are working you can write your uh, work also in the chat this will be taken as a second attendance okay so you please uh, write your name your college name and your year if you are working you can write your work in the chat so this will be a second attendance the final attendance okay you can okay. continue sir thank you okay so all of you are able to see the slide. Uh, are you able to see the slide? Uh, someone can say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We are able to see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see. So. Yes, sir. Actually, our our universe. Yes, sir. We can see. We can. Actually, our universe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir is very very big there are so many planets in this universe it cannot be even counted the length and breadth of the universe is so humongous so huge so large that there is you know no question of even finding the length and breadth of the universe it's so huge the galaxy the planetary system where we are there presently, in front of that, our Earth planet is very tiny. It's, you know, very, very small, insignificant. And within that Earth planet, we are in the continent of Asia. And within that continent of Asia, there are so many countries. And within that continent, we are in India. And within that India, we are in the state of West Bengal. And within West Bengal, there are so many places. And we are playing, you know, we are staying right now in one of the places. And the place where we are situated right now, there are so many other, other people, other living entities. And we are one of them. So you have to understand that our existence is very tiny. 
it is not a very significant you know we sometimes become unnecessarily proud by seeing the technological advancement we thought we think that by technological advancement we have we have conquered everything we have conquered the material nature we think like that but in this times of corona virus it has been proved beyond doubt that simply by technological advancement we can cannot control anything the the most powerful nations of the world the nations which have the most powerful medical system and what to talk about america america's medical system is no country in the world is even even you know you know 10 miles close to what the what the american medical system is it is so strong but can it guarantee the expansion of life can it guarantee higher life life span cannot even guarantee you know someone was telling me that you know i was reading one theory that a country where the medical system is very good the life expectancy and the disease prevention is more but in this time of coronavirus this theory have been completely shattered then why the italian prime minister italy being such a small country but the italian prime minister even after putting military lockdown in this small country of italy is coming in front of the press conference crying and needing help from god so we need to understand that we should not think that we are completely in control we are controlled we are not the supreme controller that notion uh, that notion is completely wrong a small corona virus is controlling the whole world and we think that we are the supreme controller so such is the illusion you can understand so in the today's day we see that we are technologically advancing but so many things like the whole world is fear of atomic warfare at every moment there is fear of atomic warfare therefore whenever two nuclear power state and there is any conflict you know right now there is conflict between uh, india and china and india uh, sorry america and china is also india and china the whole world is very tensed because both the nations are uh, nuclear powered nations hmm? so we see that not it's not necessary that the advancement of science and technology is making our life very happy but the goal of science is actually that the goal of science is to increase our comfort and thereby increase our happiness science have been established with that goal in mind but that goal does not seem to get fulfilled we have made united nations but has united nations been able to stop war no powerful country even gives any importance to united nations they don't listen anything about in united nations it is just has remained as a formality so again if we see the effects of technological advancement so we are going away from nature's gifts nowadays you know uh, you know you know you can say fortunately or unfortunately uh, due to the lockdown scenario the rivers of india are becoming better there will be no requirement of any money to be put in the ganga rejuvenation project ganga has already been uh, purified to great extent the ganga in haridwar it is, you can right now you can drink that water also so we think that by exploiting nature uh, we will get scot free but nature has this system it is not that it is it's, it's like a very beautiful machine this nature a very nicely organized machine 
We cannot do anything with the machine. Right now, if you have a fridge, uh, you do anything with the fridge, you, uh, you know, there can be so many problems. We have to work with the fridge according to the manual of the fridge. We have to work with the laptop according to the way the, uh, the manufacturer has said, the manufacturer has given the manual. In that way, we have to uh, work with the laptop. So any machine which is made by a lot of intelligence, there is a manual to it. And if we don't act according to the manual, there is always going to be problems reverting back. So material nature is a very beautiful cosmic machine which is completely in control, which is not that it's, 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 it's not that it is just anything is happening. You know, the sun, the sun, the earth, the, the earth is tilting at an angle of 23 and a half degree. If this earth is not tilting at the angle of 23 and a half degree, then there would be no season change in the world. So, many things in nature are following the Fibonacci series in mathematics. Exact Fibonacci series. So, it's a beautiful design. Nothing is happening by chance. We see so many planets in this, even in this, uh, in this solar system. There are so many planets and so many comets are uh, always moving in the outer space. And there are so many other planets in the other galaxies also. We don't find that one planet is colliding with another planet. If there is no system, if there is no traffic management in Kolkata city, then there must be there must be collision between vehicles. But we never see ever that uh, one comet is coming and colliding with the Earth planet. One time when I was small uh, child, at that time there was a news that one comet will come and it will collide with the earth and the earth will be destroyed. Hmm? That was in the news. Uh, just like, you know, in 2012, a uh, lot of news was coming. 2012, the world will be destroyed. So like that, it was told in the news in 1995, 96, like that time. So, uh, but after some time, they changed their news. They told that the, uh, the, the comet will come and hit the earth, but uh, there is doubt that whether it will destroy the earth or not. And actually the comet came to the atmosphere of the earth. We went and saw that. Uh, I went in a river bank and saw that thing. The comet actually came to the earth, means in the earth's atmosphere it entered. But it could, it could destroy nothing. It was just a beautiful scene. Nothing was destroyed. So this creation of this, this entire cosmos is so nicely designed. And there is a manual that how to live in this world. And that manual is our Vedic scriptures. Every machine has a manual. If we don't use that machine, in a, if we use that machine in whatever way I want, according to my whimsical nature, the machine is going to give its, you know, you know it, is, it is going to revert back, you know, very nicely to give the answer. So therefore, we need to understand that life has a purpose. It's not that we are staying in this world, we are present in this world just for without no reason. It cannot be like that. Everything has a reason behind it. We see the effects of technology. In spite of technological advancement, we are leading synthetic life. Synthetic life in the sense that we might have 5,000 friends in Facebook but we don't have five friends in real life. This synthetic artificial life. We have lack of trust. Nowadays, the relationships are so fragile. In this lockdown period, the divorce rate has increased 10 times. So lack of trust, lack of relationship, lack of, uh, lack of, every, of these values. Ill effects and what to talk about the ill effects on health. It's only increasing in number. So we should ask this question that in spite of so much technological advancement, are our life becoming more better, happier? The goal of technology is to make us happy. But really, 
क्या हम लोग हैप्पी हो रहे हैं हमारा की सत्य और बस आनंद बढ़े टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडभांसमेंटर साथे साथ If you see the world's uh, world defense budget, if you see America is spending the highest, the total GDP. Uh, in one year, America is spending the entire GDP of India. So actually, you know, we might talk a lot that you know India's economy is rising; it will catch up to America, uh, like this things like that. But already the economy of America, the Western world, is so huge. that it is it is beyond even imagination to catch in terms of economy and in terms of technology we are we are nowhere in front of america if you talk about economy still now we are nowhere in front of america in terms of technology we are nowhere in front of japan you cannot even imagine how technological development is there in the western countries and in you know the countries like japan so but still we need to understand that martin luther king junior is a very you know is a great personality all the major countries are increasing their missiles increasing their defense budget increasing increasing their uh, you know the military power but why it's due to two reasons one is out of fear and the other reason is the desire to dominate these are the two reasons there is fear of one's existence and the desire to dominate these two are the main reasons where we see martin luther king junior he told that we live in an age of guided missile but misguided men so the most the need the emergency need of the hour of the whole world is the guidance proper guidance which will make the whole world happy and peaceful that's the biggest necessity in the modern civilization and we see Yes, we see in terms of you know uh, our uh, respected professor Gautam Pal sir has uh, already told about all these aspects of you know science. So I will not go much into these scientific aspects, uh, but I will tell one thing that uh, one can see that there are limitations in science. We cannot deny that fact. Uh, the science that we are reading. in our schools and colleges we need to understand it very carefully sometimes uh, for example you know uh, for example this big bang theory only hmm? let's consider this big bang theory only the western world has already rejected those who are advanced in science already rejected the big bang theory which is completely a blind belief you know there's all the assumptions which are there in the big bang theory you know i don't feel even a rickshaw wala will you know if he applies his mind and even a rickshaw wala will also tell that this is completely blind faith there is no logic first thing there is no you know forget about any proof there is absolutely no 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 question of any proof so absolutely that is blind faith lekin what happens but what happens because these things are there in the indian textbooks even after the western world has rejected both darwin's theory and both a uh, big bang theory have been long before rejected you know 15 20 years only before these were outrightly rejected from the syllabus in the western countries but still because our textbooks are giving that we blindly accept that we don't ask any question that is it reasonable faith and on the other hand and on the other hand if you see the textbooks if you see the uh, textbooks of class 8 class 9 and in class 7 only systematically the textbooks are writing that the vedic science is mythology veda vedas is completely mythology repeatedly these are 
hammered in our textbooks and because we accept whatever is given to us blindly and without any arguing or reason we don't apply our mind therefore we are going away from our vedic wisdom and we don't see that the, what is the real science yes scientific advancement is also necessary definitely isaac newton he discovered the uh, laws of motion yes laws of motion is true yes laws of motion is there laws of motion are also talked about in our vedic scriptures definitely in vaisheshik sutra it is there so that is truth isaac newton himself told that i might have discovered many laws in this world but there are so many laws in this world that my discovery is just nothing it's just like pebbles in front of you know on a sea it's this just an insignificant amount of you know discovery you know in front of the so many laws which are there in the material nature and isaac newton newton clearly told clearly he told that there must be an intelligent creator the supreme lord behind the creation of these laws i have not made those laws i have only discovered these laws i have not invented those laws the laws are already there and whatever i have discovered and that is very few in compared to what it is there in this entire cosmic universe so scientifically we point out to some relative cause it doesn't point out to the absolute cause i will give example of this you know in some slides later and of course if you see very carefully if you see the scientific theories then one thing you will notice especially about creation and especially about the details uh, details minute minute uh, you, know, you know microphysics if you talk uh, people at, uh, in 2008 in 2008 there was a experimental setup which was constructed in geneva switzerland that experimental setup costs 14 lakh crore rupees 14 lakh crore rupees was spent to find to find the god particle in the atom so still now uh, you know in 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 2008 it was coming in all the newspapers for 15 20 days it was coming in all the newspapers that you know this experiment is going on and the amount of money and the huge is a 27 mile radius uh, tunnel 27 mile radius you know uh, experimental setup that has been constructed and because of the amount of money that has been spent with so much humongous amount of money it was in the newspapers you know for 15 days it was in the media so they were trying to find still now they are trying to find god particle so actually we are all searching after god someone knows someone doesn't know that's the thing so in scientific theory whatever is the best fit if you talk about atomic theory whatever is best fitting to that theory with the reality that is accepted as the the best that, that is accepted as the perfect for that time for example atomic theory whatever atomic theory was best fitting with the with the experimental setup that was considered true and when the latter theory came previous one was kicked out when when better more fitting theory came and the previous one was again kicked out so like that it's it 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 gives a theory science gives the theory which best fits the evidence so therefore uh you can see in this graph that there there is a domain of science science has a domain uh, it's not that it doesn't have a domain and science has discovered and invented you know if you say about technological stuff you know there has been an advancement it is not denying it's no it cannot deny th that science you know it is it is wrong it's not like that that's not the point but we need to understand that science the modern science that we read in our colleges and schools this is talking about only matter matter and combination of matter that is the only thing so beyond matter but spiritual science the vedic science it is talking about 
matter uh, uh, gross matter subtle matter and spirit soul all three things the vedic science is talking about so just i will give example so what is called as gross matter the gross matter means that that matter which we can which we can perceive with our senses or we can prove experimentally that is called as gross matter just like wind 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 is also gross matter because is physically you can see the when the when there is a wind we can see that there is effect clear effect is there so wind uh, although it may not be very physically visible but it's a gross matter that we can easily perceive it through our senses second thing is so science modern science only deals with gross matter it is not going beyond gross matter but what to talk about subtle matter now spiritual science bhagavad gita talks about subtle matter and when it talks about subtle matter it talks about mind now mind why it is called a subtle matter mind why it is called subtle matter subtle means that which you cannot see or which we cannot even experimentally prove so mind so does there exist mind or not definitely mind is existing mind is taking us to one place next moment it is taking us to another place third moment it is taking us to another place so mind is there we cannot deny the existence of mind mind is the storehouse of thoughts we tell mera aaj mon kharab hai amar aaj ke mon kharab amar aaj ke mon khub khushi mera aaj mon bahut khush hai so we cannot deny the existence of mind now what is the science what is the mechanics of mind modern science which university which college which which school is teaching is the massachusetts institute of technology uh, uh, teaching us about the mechanics of mind no is the is the massachusetts institute of technology teaching us about what is beyond gross matter and subtle matter what is spirit soul is it teaching us is the massachusetts institute of technology teaching us what is the difference between a dead body and a living body no so therefore you should understand that somewhere down the line we need to add another dimension of spiritual science within our lives and that is practical that is not something which is completely based on imagination when the bhagavad gita talks about mind uh, when the bhagavad gita tells that uh, that how the mind works and we can prove that we can check that with our own mind we can check that with the minds of others bhagavad gita is telling that if the mind complete contemplates on this thing this will result we can check it with our own mind we can check it with the situations of the world we can check it with the minds of others it is not that this will act this is only true for the hindu mind it is only true for a christian mind it is only true for a muslim mind no whatever knowledge bhagavad gita gives it is absolute it is beyond all this sectarian you know you know uh, li- you know uh, limited external views of you know uh, of you know so called you know uh, you know religions that we you know talk about external external things that we that we mark you know? so bhagavad gita is giving us the knowledge which is meant for everyone everyone it does not see any difference with these external things like hindu muslim christian no it's a science bhagavad gita doesn't have all this uh, bhagavad gita tells us to see with equal vision that everyone is a spirit soul part and parcel of god what we have done there is no difference that the goal of all these scriptures like bhagavad gita bible quran the goal is the same to love god to connect to god but we see we, we sometimes we, we 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 ask this question and say that that why there is in the name of religion there is so much violence 
There is no conflict or maramari among Bible and Vedas. There is no maramari among uh, in between Quran and and Vedas. No, maramari is only due to some selfish people. That we need to understand. Only few selfish people to fulfill their own agenda. They are creating these differences and they are trying to gain some material profit from that. And that's why the name of religion, the name of these scriptures, which are the guidebook of life, like Vedas, the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran, the Bible, the name of these scriptures are going down due to some selfish people. So therefore we need to understand that we need to, we need to see the things with clear perspective. We need to inquire. Just somebody is telling, just in our, 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 our school books it is written that Vedas are mythology. And mythology means what? Mythology means Mithya. Simply Mithya. Simply it's a story. Now the Bhagavad Gita is telling about the science of the mind. Is it telling a story? Is it telling a fairy tale? Not only about mind, Bhagavad Gita is telling about so many other things which one can check in our real life. So is it telling a story? Is it a mythology? So we don't ask these questions. Whatever we get, we simply, you know, uh, you know, we blindly accept. Ab tak hum log blind following hi karte aaye hain. Hum logo jante nahi the. Amra yato din dhore blind following hi kore eschi. Blind faith hi amra chilam. Amra reasonable faith er jaga chilam na. Hum log reasonable faith ka jaga mein tha hi nahi. Ab tak hum log blind faith hi kiye hue. जो भी हम लोगों को सिखाया गया वही हम लोग सच मान लिए कभी हम लोग प्रश्न ही नहीं किए विथ ओपन माइंड ओपन माइंड इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सो देयर फोर हाउ स्पिरिचुअल साइंस कैन फिल दिस गैप पेट्रियल साइंस यू नो इट इज गिविंग नॉलेज अबाउट मैटर एंड दैट इज एसेंशियल एग्रीड वी नीड टू हैव द नॉलेज ऑफ मैटर and this helps us you know to make our you know life more comfortable and uh, with more ease but at the same time we must add the another dimension of spiritual science along with the material science then it becomes complete then it becomes complete because the purview of material science has a limit it goes to this extent and beyond that, the answers are there in spiritual science. And spiritual science is also it's science. It's a practice also. I say, I'll, I'll just end because um, today I will not be able to complete uh, this. Uh, next next day I will uh, complete this because already the time uh, the time limit has uh, not crossed. Uh, so I will uh, I will just end in one minute. Uh, so just remaining few one two things uh, important things I, I will tell in the next next uh, uh, next day. So the point last point which I want to mention. So that is that material science and spiritual science can coexist together. It's not that uh, you know I am telling or we are telling that just simply uh, give up uh, you know studying science technology. These are all nonsense. This is not the message that we are giving. Certainly not. Of course, some of the things in science which, which were completely blind faith and that we uh, openly tell and that's a fact the whole scientific world is accepting that. But the material science, the science that we read has done a lot of things on matter. It's a fact. But beyond that, beyond that matter, there are things which are important also. Is mind not important? Yeah, today's day, today's day, so many IITNs are committing suicide. And those who commit suicide, they already, it has been seen that they already got big jobs. Gyaralaka package paane ke baad hi suicide karne ka man karta hai. Sab ke sab case ab dekh lijiye, G News mein jaake, YouTube mein ab G News mein dekh lijiye, jitna bhi IIT mein suicide case aaya hai. IIT te jato suicide case ase chhe, sab gulo te hi dekhe nao, sab gulo te hi dekhe nao. ये भालो जॉब पावर पर ही सुसाइड करते होले अच्छा जॉब मिलने के बाद ही सुसाइड करना पड़ा ना थी देर इज नो फैमिली प्रॉब्लम देर इज नो फाइनेंशियल प्रॉब्लम देन व्हाई सुसाइड सो 
Even I have seen in my life, IAS, IPS officers also committed suicide. IAS, IPS officers. Big, big officers, they were having tremendous power. Tremendous power. So, where is the thing which you are lacking? This mind is actually most important thing. It can make hell out of heaven. Mind can make hell out of heaven. Sab kuch achcha chal raha hai. Still it can make us in go in complete negative zone. That's the power of mind. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita tells that mind, uncontrolled mind is our greatest enemy. And controlled mind is our greatest friend. That's what Bhagavad Gita is telling. And when we see that, and this one statement of Bhagavad Gita, if we can realize in our life, I am absolutely sure in whatever field you are, you will excel. There is no, no doubt about that. So whatever Bhagavad Gita and the Vedic scriptures tell, it's not just mythology. It's a very, very cheap word, mythology. It's completely, completely, you know, absolutely, I have no hesitation in, you know, telling that whoever coined, you know, actually the Britishers coined this term mythology. You know, I, I tried, uh, I, I was thinking that I will show you the evidence and all these things, but I don't have the time. So the Britishers coined this term mythology and they had a purpose behind it. They had a clear purpose behind it. They knew very well that jab tak hum log, uh, jab tak hum log bharatiya logo ka vishwas bedo se nahi hata paayenge, tab tak hum log bharatiya logo ko laat nahi maar paayenge. We see in the British rule, in the first 150 years, the Britishers did not kick the Indians. Britishers bharatiya logo ko laat nahi maara tha tab tak. Only when you see, after 1900s, we see the Britishers kicking Indians. So why? Because they worked 150 years to remove the faith of the Indians from that they, they made the libraries of the Vedas, they turned to ashes, the libraries of the Vedas which are there in our, in our India. And using these terms, mythology, this and that, with, with complete co coordinated effort for 150 years, then they came to the point of kicking the Indians. So just imagine. Therefore, as Indians, you know, as Indians, we must realize that India is known for its spiritual culture. India is known for Bhagavad Gita. India is not known for technology. You go in Japan and you ask about India's technology, you know, you know, they will better spit on your face, you know, like that. You go to any America and talk about India's economy and all these things. They will not given one person, you know, hearing to your words. You know how Indians remain in America? Just like the maid servants. So, we need to understand that this spiritual science is essential in our life. We add this spiritual science with the science that we are studying, then it becomes complete. Because it can reinforce and practically have so many benefits. I will talk about the benefits in our, in our next session, next program, I know because of the time constraint. I am not able to uh, uh, continue further, so um, I will I will rather also uh, skip the question answers. Also, I will uh, I will tell that we must have many questions. So please write it to your respective facilitators uh, and uh, you know those who are connected to me, you can write me directly. You know, so uh, so um, the question answers also I am skipping right now because we have some announcements and. Uh, uh, specifically, you know, some portion, it will just 10 minutes, 10-20 uh, minutes thing, it is uh, remaining that I will cover and the next seminar will be on law of karma. Bahati bada issue, who borrow issue akon, mane akon je coronavirus situation, akon je coronavirus situation and now the court due to the coronavirus situation, abhi ke liye, ke bahati bada ek cheese hai isko samajna, law of karma, this is the greatest law of the world, there are so many laws. Laws of physics, laws of thermodynamics, laws of optics. There are so many laws in this world. But this law of karma is the biggest law. And that is somewhat also connected to the last portion. So next day I will cover that thing. And we will uh, proceed to the law of karma. Which is going to, going to be a very interesting you know, seminar. So I will uh, end here. Uh, I, I thank all of you for your uh, patient hearing. 
and being uh, uh, you know tolerating uh, tolerating me <laughs> at least so uh, thank you very much um, thank you uh, shubhak sir uh, for your uh, wonderful session that you have given and i also thank all the attendants all the participants who have uh, spent their valuable time you, to attend the session thank you so i said as i said previously um, we are searching for happiness in various things we are working very hard we are studying very hard doing so many activities but happiness is just in our dreams only we think that by achieving something in the future we will become happy but that never happens even if we even if we become happy it is just for a temporary thing like we work out so many things to become happy and then what happens now nature like throws water on all of it now the situation of coronavirus then the cyclone came and the locust worms are coming so what what is these things so what is the actual problem what is the root cause so we want to find this thing what is the root cause how to actually become happy so these things will be discussed in the future sessions okay so now we have just gone gone to one session it is just the basics that we have learned today okay so topic by topic step by step we will progress towards the final session that is faster than happiness okay so i request all of you uh, to save the numbers of the uh, coordinators who have called you okay those coordinators who have called you please just save their numbers so that we will be sending you some important videos some articles and information about the next seminar okay so at the final final seminar when it will happen so we'll have a special get together for all of you will distribute certificates there will be prize distribution and all of you will get a hard copy of a deluxe uh, copy of a bhagavad gita as it is okay it is followed as a manual life manual in also most of the universities in america so i thank you once again all of you for your valuable time and i thank i thank professor gautam paul and professor shubhak sen for enlightening us with this uh, wonderful knowledge of bhagavad gita thank you sir thank you everybody if you have any questions you can ask sir or you can ask the coordinators so uh, so uh, so so every sunday this 10:30 uh, we'll have this uh, seminars so uh, please be there uh, next week same time same channel thank you thank you everyone and for netaji subhash engineering college students uh, uh, your mmc uh, will be on thursday morning um, thursday morning 8:30 uh, that will be your time so if it is okay for you you can raise your hand nitaj shubhas engineering college students